We already went over the basics of Sprite Kit in Project 11, so this time we're going to move a little bit faster. Open GameScene.Swift, then add these two new properties inside the GameScene class. The first one's called GameScore and is an SK label node, implicitly unwrapped. That'll store our score visible on the screen. Then we'll have var score equals zero, the player's actual internal score. Just like last time, Project 11, we're going to have a property observer inside there. So we'll say did set. Then game score dot text is equal to score string interpolation score like that. Now, as I did move to view, we're going to add our background picture and the score label up front. We'll say let background equals sk sprite node using the image named initializer. And the background's called whack background. We added that over here in our asset catalog. It's this big picture here of the grass and the tree. We will position that correctly by saying background dot position is equal to a CG point with the X position of 512 and the Y of 384. That's smack in the middle of our parent view. We'll use background dot blend mode is equal to dot replace. If you remember, that means draw the whole background over the whatever's there beforehand uh, without taking into account alpha. We'll modify its Z position or Z position to be minus one, place it behind other stuff, and then call add child with that background. For the game score, we'll say game score is equal to SK label node. We're going to use the font named initializer. This time we'll use chalk duster again. Uh, by default, the game score text will be zero, so we're going to say game score dot text is equal to score zero. We'll do a position, uh, position of CG point. X will be eight, Y will be eight. That's the bottom left corner of our screen. Remember, sprite kit measures Y from bottom to top, rather than UI kit top to bottom. We'll do game score dot horizontal alignment mode equals dot left to left align the text. Centering the default, we want left. We'll do game score dot font size is equal to 48, so nice and big. And then add child game score. So it adds that label to our game scene. If I press Command R to build and run the game now, we should see our grassy background with a tree on one side, plus a square across the bottom left. Let's have a look. Boom, there we go. Big tree, score, bottom left corner. We're going to be doing much more of that in just a moment. But first, we need to fix one small but important bug. Our game will look wrong on certain devices. Now, we're using right now iPad Air third generation. I'm going to select temporarily iPad Pro 11 inch, then press Command R to build and run that. We set our game scene to have the size 1024 by 768, which will be sized correctly for most iPads. However, the 11 inch iPad Pro is a little bit special. It has an aspect ratio that's ever so slightly different from other iPads. And the default behavior of the Xcode template we're using is to stretch the game so the edges get cut off. So here you can see it running in the iPad Pro 11 inch. What you can see is our score label's no longer visible. It's gone off that bottom left edge there. It doesn't look good. So the score label's being cropped in the bottom left corner here, thanks to that aspect ratio being ever so slightly different. Because the default behavior of our Xco template is to stretch the game so edges get cut off. Now very often that solution is perfectly fine. The difference is only very, very small after all. But in this case, we can ask Sprite Kit to gently stretch our scene so that it fits the device dimensions no matter what aspect ratio we're using. To do that, we'll go back to Xcode again and choose GameViewController.Swift. And you see this line of code here, scene.scale mode equals aspect fill. That's what causes us to overlap the edges on the iPad Pro 11 inch. We're going to change dot aspect fill to be just dot fill. So it'll stretch it very gently to fit all different aspect ratios of the iPad. If I press Command R again now, we should see it'll look the same on iPad Air, iPad Regular, iPad Pro 12.9, and here it is in the 11 inch looking absolutely fine. So what we're saying is it's just stretched by the tiniest, tiniest amount to fit. It's basically imperceptible, but it avoids our score lying off the screen. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, quit 
the iPad Pro 11 inch simulator and turn back to the iPad Air simulator it is much faster. But I'll try it one more time there just to make sure it looks the same. Hopefully this layout bug is gone. It's a good fix for the future. Boom, there we go. Score still zero, bottom left corner looking great. With that small layout bug fixed, the next job is to fill our game scene with holes, with a penguin in each hole. We want each hole to do as much work itself as possible, so rather than clutter our game scene with code, we're going to create a subclass of SK node that will encapsulate all hole related functionality. So back in Xcode, I'll press Command N to add a new file. I'll choose iOS, then Coco Touch class. For subclass of, I'll enter in SK node, and I'll name this thing Whack Slot. Then press Next and Create. Now SK node is the parent class of SK sprite node, SK label node, and SK emitter node. It's a general kind of node. This base class doesn't draw images like sprites or hold text like labels. It just sits in our scene at a particular position, holding other nodes as children. Now as you can see, I've immediately got a compile error here because Swift claims not to know what SK node is. This is easily fixed by adding the line import sprite kit into this file because SpriteKit's framework is where SK node comes from. To begin with, all we want the waxlock class to do is to add a hole at its current position. So I'll add a new method inside waxlock like this, func configure at position a CG point, self.position equals that position, then make a whack hole and add it as a child. So I'll say let sprite equals SK sprite node, using again image named, using whack hole this time, and add child that sprite. So we have the whack slot has its own children inside it, a whack hole sprite node. We'll add the whack slot to our main game. And you might wonder why we have a method configure at position rather than initializer. But the truth is, if you created a custom initializer, you get roped into creating others because of Swift's required initializer rules. If you don't create any custom initializers and you have no non-optional properties, Swift will just use the parent classes init methods. We want to create four rows of slots with five slots in the top row, then four in the second, then five, then four. This creates a pleasing shape, but as we're creating lots of slots, we're gonna need three things. First, an array in which we can store all our slots for referencing later on. Second, a create slot app method to handle slot creation. And third, four loops, one for each row. The first item is easy enough. We'll add this property just above the existing game score in the game scene.swift. So here in game scene.swift, I'll go here and say var slots is an array of wax slot. Open and close parens. As for number two, the create slot method, that's not hard either. We need to create a method that accepts a position, then create a wax slot object calls its configure app method, then adds a slot both to the scene and to our array. So I'll scroll down, find some space, and say func create slot at position, cg point. Let slot equals a new wax slot, slot.configure at that position, add child the slot, and slots.append the new slot. Boom. The only moderately hard part of this task is the for loops that call create slot at, because you need to figure out what positions to use for the slots. Fortunately for you, I already did the design work, so I can tell you exactly where the slot should go. So before the end of did move to view, add four new lines of code with loops. We'll say for i in zero up to less than five, create slot at cg point. It'll do x and y, x is 100 plus i times 170 and y is going to be 410. That's our first loop. I'll copy and paste that a few times. Boom, like that. Second loop will have uh, 0 up to 4. Third one will be 0 to 5 and fourth 0 to 4. So 5, 4, 5, 4. For the correctness slots, we have 100 for the first one here. Second one will be 1 80 to be indented just slightly, third one 100 again, and fourth one 180. And for the Y positions, it's going to be moving down the screen. So it's 410 at first, 
then 320, then 230, then 140. So it's down 90 each time. Remember, higher Y values in Sprite Kit place nodes towards the top of the scene. So those lines you just wrote create the uppermost slots first, then work downwards. So far, this has all been stuff we've done before, so I've tried to get through it as fast as I could. But it's now time to try something new, SK Crop Node. This is a special kind of SK Node subclass that uses an image as a cropping mask. Anything in the colored part will be visible, anything in the transparent part will be invisible. By default, nodes don't crop. They just form part of a node tree. The reason we need the crop node is to hide our penguins. We get the impression they're inside the holes, sliding out for the player to whack. And the easiest way to do that is just to have a crop mask shaped like the hole that makes the penguin invisible when it moves outside the mask. The easiest way to demonstrate the need of an SK crop node is to give it a nil mask. This will effectively stop the crop node from doing anything, thus allowing you to see the trick behind our game. So in waxlot.swift, I'm going to add a new property to the class in which we'll store the penguin picture node. We'll say var char node is an SK sprite node implicitly unwrapped. Now we're going to add this just before the end of self.configure app position. We'll say let crop node be equal to an SK crop node. Crop node dot position is CG point x0 y15. Place this thing uh, at a z position of 1 to bring it forward just slightly and give it temporarily the mask node property value of nil. So it has no mask behind it. It'll do nothing temporarily. Just so we can see how it works. Now you can load in our character node by saying char node is sk sprite node with the image named penguin good. Then char node dot position is equal to cg point with the x of zero and the y of minus 90. Get it right the way off the screen. We'll name this thing using char node dot name equal to character. So we know where the character is tapped. And then crop node dot add child char node. So the character node added to the crop node. And then add child the crop node. So to recap, our wax slot is a node. It has a hole inside it. It also has a crop node inside it. And that crop node contains the character node. So we're building this tree of nodes. So we're saying here, more specifically the sizing, the crop node has a position of x0, y15, just slightly off from the slot itself. Now, number 15 isn't a random number. It's the exact number of points required to make the crop node line up with the whole graphics. It's there uh, on purpose. But you also set this mask node to be nil, which means nothing right now. Nil is, after all, the default value. It's there because we're changing it in just a moment. For our character, we give it a default image name of penguin good. That's the uh, good kind of penguin. The bad penguins are red, uh, presumably because they're bubbling over with hellfire or something. Uh, this is placed, bizarrely, at minus 90, which is way below the hole, as if the penguin were hiding. I say bizarrely because, of course, penguins aren't exactly known for hiding in holes in the countryside. What matters, though, the important thing is that the character node gets added to the crop node, not to our wax slot directly. So it's inside the crop node, and the crop node added to the slot. This is because the crop node only crops things that are inside it. So let's have this really clear hierarchy. The slot has the hole and crop node as children, and the crop node has the character node as a child. Now, if I run the game now, we should see every hole has a penguin directly beneath it. Let's find out. Boom, there we go. There's a hole here, penguin directly below. Hole, penguin, hole, penguin, and so forth. Across the whole screen. That shows where the penguin is hiding. It's in the hole, as it would be if we gave the crop node a mask graphic. Speaking of mask graphics, if you look in our assets, you will see we have a whack mask. This thing here, that is the shape of our uh, visible area we want to show the penguin inside. This curve at the bottom matches the shape of the hole exactly. Now with crop nodes, 
everything that has a color, any color, is visible. And everything transparent is invisible. So our whackmask.ping will show all the parts of the character that are above the hole in this red area here. So back in our, our slot again, we'll change crop.mask node from nil to be SK sprite node with the image named whack mask like that. And if we're on the game now, we should see no more penguins. They are hopefully, of course, still there, but now they can't be seen. Boom. So they're still down here, but the crop node's only showing things inside this area here, inside the hole, or over here and similar. And the penguins are below that, so they're not visible.